brings uh, peace is love, right? Lo- the generating uh, things in our life from love, from the perspective of loving each other, loving ourselves, is what's going to bring peace. So we start with, with love, and that's consciousness, right? We move from there, and this, is, this is, can only go in one direction. We can't go on part of the chart and then move to the other side, right? It just follows from, from love or from fear, which is the opposite ends of the spectrum of consciousness. We go from knowledge to sovereignty, right? When we, when we accept the knowledge that we are source beings, then we move to an internal monarchy, right? So we have one ruler inside of us, okay? Next, the external expression, again, following from love, is freedom. That's external anarchy. That's why we're all here, right? To create that. And the manifestation is good or, manif- or, or order. Now, on the government side, on the statism side, we have fear, right, that, which is unconsciousness, that leads to ignorance, right, indoctrination, a refusal of truth, then goes to confusion, which is an internal anarchy, right, because there's no ruler inside you because you're getting commands from government and other places, and that leads to the matrix, that leads to control, right, an external monarchy, and the manifestation of that is, is evil. So who knows uh, what are the three questions an animal can answer? Who knows one of them? An a- any animal, what's, what, are, what are the three questions an animal can answer? Are you hungry? Can I eat it is number one. Uh, number three is can I mate with it? Number two is can it eat me? Good job. So smart group. So uh, that's animal consciousness. This is a quote from Harry Palmer who wrote the Avatar course. Order is established in animal consciousness by dominance. Order is established in intellectual consciousness by argument or debate. Order is established in spiritual consciousness by respect. All right? So according to uh, the author, about 50% of humanity operates at the level of animal consciousness on a consistent basis. All right? Here's an example of, uh, this is from one of his talks, uh, an animal consciousness beer commercial. It tastes good, it won't hurt you, and it makes you look sexy, right? So, you know, the powers that shouldn't be, know, they know this information, and they, you know, they're going to put it out there to, uh, to get the dollars and cents for them. Now, about 40% of a humanity or so operates at the level of intellectual consciousness. Intellectual consciousness is ego, competition, war, rationalization. That's all, that's all the intellectual consciousness. The spiritual consciousness, which we need to get more people moved up there, that's benevolence, empathy, compassion, and all the, the, the top you know, ways of being. Maybe only 5 to 10% of people operate at that level on a consistent basis. And I think this is one of the most important things that how we actually create a voluntary society, because just like Larkin Rose said last night, if you want to be free and you're on a plantation of slaves, there's, there's not really a, a, a path for you. You have to get more people that are you know, interested in, in moving this forward. Fantastic quote here. The best way to remove suffering from your own life is to act with the intention to reduce the suffering of other sentient creatures. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peace Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theconsciousresistance.com and theseasofliberty.com. So Peaceful Anarchism is covered by the Bibcot No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information for this at bibcot.org. So today we have a returning guest, Adam Williams, who is a comeback coach and an avatar master and he also uh, is into crypto consulting. And you can find his websites. Uh, there's theavatarcourse.com. You can find all, all the information about the Avatar Course. And then uh, avatarrepc.com, which has all the media and videos about the course. And then avatarresults.com. Uh, and that has over 500,000 testimonials from people who have taken 
the course. And then there's um, meritorious.acuity scheduling. Which one is that about? That's uh, that's the crypto consulting. Group. Crypto it's consulting. Meritorious, meritorious uh, solutions. All right. Okay. So that, that's the crypto consulting website, and we'll have all these in the in the, in the description as well. Um, and uh, and you can find him on Facebook under Adam N. Williams. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into all that. What he's up to. Uh, so Adam, thanks a lot for coming back on the show. Uh, thank you so much, Danilo. Uh, wonderful to be back with you again. Yeah, yeah, I've been following you a lot on uh, on Facebook. You're going all over the world and you're giving all these speeches and talks and uh, doing a lot of good things, spreading the love. So I'm uh, <laughs> I'm happy to talk to you again. So so thanks yes. A lot. So so please uh, acquaint my audience with uh, with what you've been up to lately. Yeah, the well, uh, first thing I want to do is uh, give a thanks to Jeff Borwick and uh, Nathan T. Freeman for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak at Anarchapuco uh, last year, or this past uh, spring uh, down in, in Mexico. That was really a big catalyst for me to uh, continue to integrate all the things I've been doing and, and move forward. It's great to be uh, on stage for the first time since high school. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, an interesting journey uh, from... Uh, my statist upbringing and, and, and statist career, uh, being on Wall Street for, for 16 years, uh, left that behind finally last year uh, and moved to the Netherlands uh, last April and uh, really had a nice renewal and uh, got myself, it was a big reset button after you know a long time in the Northeast and staying in Connecticut about five years too long. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it's been uh, a great journey to... Um, you know, just, just live within my principles and focus on doing things that uh, give myself and others more autonomy and more self-sufficiency. That's what I'm focused on. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's basically the goal of the, of the Avatar course, right? Is, um, the, the way you're saying is um, just give people inspiration and, you know, good vibes and stuff like that. How, how would you describe yeah. the Avatar course? Yeah, Avatar course has been around for 30 years. Um, it's, uh, it's a course on human consciousness. I teach that with... Uh, you know, ten about ten thousand other masters that are uh, around the world that, that deliver the course. Hmm. Uh, it's been you know many hundreds of thousands of people that have uh, that have taken the course over that time, and uh, it's really amazing. There's not much out, else out there like it. I really say there's nothing else uh, out there like it. Uh, I've personally done a lot of different trainings in uh, the personal development space. Um, I've walked on fire with Tony Robbins. You know, I've studied Eckhart Tolle. Hmm. Um, you know, been to see Abraham Hicks live and done all kinds of things, spent a lot of money on uh, relationship uh, counseling uh, when I was married before. Um, and, uh, you know, Avatar Course is really the, the, the most powerful and pure self-development program that's out there that's available. So that's why uh, it's uh, so important to me. And I see the transformations that come out of it are just amazing. And the goal is to create source beings. So, you know, source being is someone who's learned how to unindoctrinate themselves and uh, dive into their consciousness and heal things and be able to create the reality they prefer. Yeah, that's one of the things that I notice um, with a lot of um, a lot of volunteers uh, is that they are willing to be more introspective and uh, you know, look at their own thought processes, and the, be- and the first one that they do pay attention to is the idea of government, the belief in authority. But then after you get past that, you get deeper and deeper levels of, uh, I guess, of complications, psychic complications in your in your mind, and and you you know begin to unravel things. And and so yeah, it sounds like a perfect type of course for those people who are genuinely inquisitive. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I just came from the Avatar course uh, last week. I was down in Orlando. I actually just stepped up to the the first level of responsibility for masters within the course, which is to be at every international course, which is every three months in Orlando. So wow. it's a big commitment to uh, come over from Netherlands and and teach as as part of the American uh, network, uh, which I, which I'm still a part of. Uh, but well worth it uh, to be able to help people and profound transformations and be able to handle things that they'd never been able to handle before. So really proud of my uh, last student, uh, who's uh, Mr. Jake Bryan, who I met at Anarchapuco. Uh, actually, I did an info hour there after my speech. With uh, There was seven people that came to that one, and uh, he was the, the first person from uh, the voluntarist community that's come to the course, so there's going to be a lot uh, more uh, where, 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 he, where he came from. 
Yeah, yeah, that's really that's really great. Yeah, definitely in Anacapulco, I, I, I imagine a lot of people there would be open to this kind of thing. Uh, so, so, so you did a speech last year, right? The last Anacapulco. How did that go? Oh, uh, yeah, speech was really amazing. It was called "What Brings Peace." Uh, it actually just came out uh, not too long ago after they uh, they edited, you know, all the speeches. Uh, and yeah, it was fantastic. I t- talked about a lot of different things. Uh, it's, it's on my Facebook page, it's on the Anacapuco Anna page, and available online uh, on YouTube. So uh, you can definitely check it out. And I lo- loved the speech. It went great. Uh, my roommate actually uh, was a Toastmasters guy, so he gave me some great tips uh, to prepare uh, before uh, I went up there. And it was just a great experience to be uh, in that vibration uh, that gave me a great spot uh, on, uh, on day one. Um, uh, which I think just uh, after uh, Julia Turyansky and uh, before uh, Carlos Morales. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic to be there. The end of it was great. I closed with the compassion exercise. And uh, that's one of the, uh, the 30 exercises that you do on the resurfacing weekend, which is the first two days of the nine-day avatar course. Mm-hmm. And uh, the expected results on that exercise are a personal sense of peace. Uh, and it was just fantastic feeling the crowd, everyone's attention now at the end of the exercise. It was very special. So a lot of people said it set the tone for the weekend. Uh, so I was very <laughs> grateful to have that experience. So, so what do you, what do you tell people when they say, um, like, wow, Adam, you know, you exude positivity and, you know, love and <laughs> compassion. <laughs> so like, have you always been like this or have you, have you yourself changed recently? Yeah, um, I, I've always been a very energetic person, um, but yeah, a lot of parts of my personality were a lot more selfish <laughs> than, than they are now. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I grew up uh, all over the country. Uh, my father, when I was 17, I had had 17 addresses, mm. so wow. um, we, we moved all over. Wow. I was born in Indiana, lived there until I was seven. We had three different houses there. Then I moved to San Antonio, Texas for 18 months, two and a half years. Uh, just outside Philadelphia and Westchester, Pennsylvania, uh, a year in Bridgewater, New Jersey, two years in Huntington Beach, California for sixth and seventh grade. That was awesome. Hmm. Uh, we were, we, uh, we had a house uh, about six blocks from the beach so you could sit in our hot tub and see the ocean. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was a great experience as a little kid. And then uh, eighth grade in high school was in San Antonio. Uh, and then I went to Rice University in Houston. Uh, then uh, nine years in Manhattan, seven years in Connecticut. And uh, now 18, 19 months in Netherlands. And I've lived in four countries. Um, I lived in France twice, lived in Australia twice, um, speak French fluently. And I've been in 34 countries. So I've wow. uh, done, done a lot of traveling uh, all, in all parts of the world. So um, growing up, um, my, uh, my life and experience is really external focused. That was what my family was very achievement you know, uh, mm. based, you know, okay. growing up all external things. And that was the focus. And uh-huh. we rocked that out. Uh, just, you know, following my, my mother and father's ex- you know, amazing example. Yeah. Uh, my dad, uh, was a, is a businessman and, uh, he was uh, president of a cable company. So back, uh, before the internet, uh, you know, he was uh, a melanin enhanced man, uh, as you know, president of the cable company mm-hmm. in the nineties. So real trailblazer and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just my, my, one of my heroes for sure. <laughs> And, um, you know, uh, that process led me to Wall Street, uh, where I became a derivatives trader, uh, and I became a director at Merrill Lynch and at Jefferies. And things were just really more uh, self-focused. You know, I was focused on, you know, money and stuff and, you know, all all those things. And uh, it was really the crisis, uh, the financial crisis that kind of woke me up from um, my you know, statism and you know, relief from government and you know things internally that I had never resolved and uh, that's what uh, brought me to the uh, introspective journey which I'm able to uh, which I've been through on a real profound level and now I'm able to help other people with. So so basically your your parents I guess primarily your father imparted a uh, like a, an ambition in you like a, yeah. a burning desire for overachievement would you say? For sure yeah definitely that was uh, that was you know my focus was. Uh, was, you know, achieving things, and mm. I'm still achievement focused. But now I uh, wrap that in compassion, right. and, you know, empathy, and service right. tellers and personal responsibility. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, I mean, it's just it's just wonderful when people you know just um, are affected by your energy. You know, when you come to the room, or even when people see you on Facebook and the things you write. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool, man. I uh, I really appreciate it. You know, I've I've been giving a lot of things away for free these, these last you know few years, building mm-hmm. uh, my credibility in the voluntary space and mm-hmm. um, learning myself and just going to conferences and. You know, sitting and sitting in, in conferences for a while, and now moving up to being able to speak on stage. So, um, yeah, it's been been quite the journey, and I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, you know, so far. So, so before your speech in in Acapulco this year, um, how much public speaking experience have you had? Yeah, no. Uh, the last time I had done it was in high school. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> it was great to come from that, and that was. That was a lot many years ago. I graduated high school in ninety six. So ninety six. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll be I'll be forty in December. Uh, so nice, nice. yeah, you know, it's uh, it had been been a while, but mm-hmm. to uh, go from that to you know having uh, what people said was one of the better speeches was uh, a big honor for sure. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, I I, uh, I used to do stand up comedy, and uh, one thing cool. that you definitely learn in that is uh, yeah. is that more people are afraid of uh, of of uh, public speaking than they are of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a, the top number one fear of people um, is like getting in front of complete strangers. I mean, I guess I guess in Anarchopulco they're not complete strangers because you know a lot of them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's a lot easier, but. But yeah, when it's a complete strangers and it's like, you know, it's nerve wracking, you know, especially, especially, you know, if you're a comedian, you know, you get up there and you have a mic and it's just you and it's like, make people laugh. People that you never met before. So, yeah. Where did, where did you do a stand up comedy? I used to perform uh, in Manhattan, some clubs there and also in Long Island. Um, right. And that was for a year uh, before my wife gave birth to our second child in 2012. So um, I performed maybe like 40 times. And uh, it was a great experience. Met awesome people. Yeah. Um, really, I bet, I, bet, I bet that you crushed it. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I did pretty good. Um, I, you can definitely see my development. Like when I first started, um, and then as I as I progressed, I tried new jokes. You know, did different things, and and eventually I kind of learned. I kind of got in, a, you know, a smooth place. You know, a sm- smooth sailing. Like I knew what was funny and. And uh, yeah, I, I did. I I I I was able to um, iron out like my method, you know, and uh, and it worked for me. But unfortunately, I had to stop because my wife needed me to help her at home. Um, but I really gained excellent um, skills. You know, that, that really gives you a, a lot of skills. You know, being able to um, talk to people um, so they don't feel threatened by you. You know, so they yes. feel at ease and calm. Um, and uh, and laughter is is a beautiful thing that can do that. It can really bridge. Um, people who, you know, might not otherwise be friends, but you know, you can just make some people laugh, and you know, all of a sudden they let their guard down, and they're more happy to be around you. It's uh, hundred hundred percent uh, correct. I agree. Yeah. So uh, okay. So so let's uh, talk about your crypto consulting course and uh, and what that's about. Sure. So uh, my partner in crypto consulting is a gentleman named uh, Chris Merritt, who uh, is a fantastic individual that I. Uh, became friends with in the past year. He's been in, in Bitcoin for a really long time since uh, since 2010. So he was mining Bitcoin back uh, when it was you know 50 a few, Bitcoin blocks. A few, Sorry, cent, a few cents or something. Yeah, since you know a long time. Yeah, wow. he had a, a big stack of Bitcoin. Wow. Uh, you know, um, you know, at, at, at one point. So yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, he's a he's an amazing individual. You know, really. Uh, just a fantastic person. He comes, you know, into Bitcoin from the financial side, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and the Austrian economics, mm-hmm. you know, perspective, uh, just like just like myself. So we really line up, and um, you know, it, it's uh, what I see in, in in blockchain happening right now is that there's so many uh, ways for people to get distracted with all these different you know derivative stuff that's coming out, network marketing stuff tied mm-hmm. to Bitcoin and all these things that. Uh, a lot of them have already started to collapse in, in on themselves, you know, after not even being around for that long, ICOs, different things. Mm-hmm. So what we do is to uh, is to help people just understand the fundamentals, understand the philosophy, just get from the basics so they can be safe and secure holders of Bitcoin and other cryptos. So do you work with uh, Sterlin Luhan? So I know he's really uh, big. I, I, lo- I love Sterlin. Sterlin's my man. We uh, we spoke together uh, both at Anarchapuco and at the Midwest 
Peace and Liberty Festival in uh, in Michigan, which I made it out to when I was in the country in, mm-hmm. uh, in the July time frame this summer. Uh, and yeah, he's, he's a great guy. We don't work together directly, but uh, you know, certainly a big supporter of what Sterling's doing to help people. And similar field, education, and, and you know, really making sure people understand what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's approaching it more from a psychological aspect, uh, which is awesome because you know, not, too many, not too many, I guess, anarchists or volunteers approach it from that perspective. Um, and- yeah, we definitely do it in a more holistic way. Um, perspective, helping people look at their entire portfolio and, you know, understand the reasons why the cryptos have value, you know, mm. decentralization, you know, uh, you know, providing something where we can have more peace on this planet and looking at it from that perspective versus, you know, uh, a get rich quick type of scream and the fear of missing out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I, I can imagine how, you know, now that, now that Bitcoin has top 7,000, that um, so many people are looking at it and like you know saying, "See, it's a bubble. It's gonna pop soon. You know, get out of it. You know." Um, and uh, I mean, what would you say to those people? I would say that it's just important to look at you know more, more than one viewpoint about what's happening. There was a fantastic article on Zero Hedge the other day mm-hmm. that broke out um, all the world's money um, into blocks, into, uh, into a graph, graphic format. It's mm-hmm. fascinating to see because numbers like trillions and quadrillions don't really mean much, you know, mm-hmm. to, to people to, to understand what's, what's happened out there and how much central banks have and the governments have, uh, inflated, you know, all these markets, real estate, mm-hmm. stocks, bonds, and all the, the, you know, I think horrific, you know, consequences are going to happen as a result of quantitative easing and, keeping interest rates at zero for all these years. Mm. So on this, um, this presentation, it showed how um, this, the, the small size of the cryptocurrency market versus you know, right. gold and silver right. versus right. real estate. And then when you look at the derivatives, like what these banks have on their balance sheet, that's why I trade. I was a derivatives trader, so I understand the risks in, in, in these products. It's, it's, it's such, a huge, such a huge amount that's out there. Mm-hmm. So when you look at when the music stops, and trillions of dollars are trying to exit a rigged casino. There's only a limited number of places it can go. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. There's governments that are trying to get involved now. You saw Russia start the, the crypto ruble that's coming out. And, you hmm. know, there's going to be different different things happening. So it's going to be ups and downs. You have the Bitcoin hard fork coming up in just a couple of weeks with uh, the Segwit 2X coming. So a lot, a lot of moving parts. Um, but what I say to people is, um, forget about how you, you heard about it before and you didn't invest. Forget about what it could have, should have. Just don't even spend any time on that. It does not help you at all. Just get involved now. Um, you can look at blockchain just like any other investment. You can buy $50 a month or $100 a month and get yourself a, you know, a position in alignment with the rest of your portfolio and just start interacting with the technology and start learning about it. That's the best place to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's really, it's really amazing. You know, when you when you put into perspective like that of what the central banks have been doing um, ever since their inception, and you compare that with the crypto market, and people are worried about the crypto market. <laughs> it's kind of like, let's get some perspective here. <laughs> exactly, hundred percent, hundred percent. So um, it, yeah, it, it's so it's so important. Like, um, you know, just the idea that that no central institution can control how much Bitcoin there is or same thing with, with gold and silver. No central institution can control how much is made or produced because it's not made or produced. It's just mined and, and, and how different that is from a central bank that can just create digits and pieces of paper and call it money that we all have to use. And then, exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, you look, at, you look at the problems it solves, like, for example, blockchain, uh, which came out in 2009 with Satoshi's white paper, solves the Byzantine general problem. And that had never, ever been able to be solved in all human consciousness. And the Byzantine general problem is um, if you've got uh, six generals surrounding, uh, like in a siege, surrounding a town, and you can only talk to one other general, how do you know what time the attack's supposed to occur? So that was never able to be answered before without a central authority, without a church, without a central bank, without a government. Mm. And now, because of blockchain, we can solve that, that problem um, with uh, decentralized consensus. So it's so powerful, so interesting. There's so many applications, some smart contracts to changing the way we do everything and really taking, uh, separating the money supply from government, just like 
the church has been separated from government, you know, for the most part. So um, you look, you look at, uh, you know, how important that has been and you see, you know, how much we can end war, we can end all this nefarious, um, you know, hidden agendas that are out there when we take away uh, the printing press from government. So it's, uh, it's very exciting and, you know, it's going to be uh, an interesting journey for sure. Yeah, I heard that uh, the big banks like Chase, I think, is trying to get into uh, blockchain technology, but but that's different than cryptocurrency, right? Oh no! So blo- blockchain technology is, is the is the technology that underlines uh, that Bitcoin and other crypto. Yeah, so that's that's the technology that makes uh, the currencies work. But but it's not like what they're trying to get into is not cryptocurrency. They they just want to use the blockchain, yeah, they're, right? They're, they, they want to use blockchain for applications, and they also want to create public cryptocurrencies to compete against the private ones or to use. Oh. Uh, and, and, there's, and there's some people like, do you know Brandon Smith from Alt Market? No. Yeah, he's an amazing writer. He's been really right in a lot of things um, you know, uh, over these last few years. I definitely pay attention to what, what he and Mike Krieger uh, from Liberty Blitzkrieg and some of these other writers who have been really spot on and put out great content. And uh, Brandon's quite concerned about you know what governments are going to try to do with blockchain technology and how they can use it to um, enable this one world currency and these you know uh, new world order kind of you know mm. uh, you know themes that have been out there for a while. So like I said, you know it's it's going to be ups and downs. You know you, could, you should only put um, an amount of money into cryptocurrencies that you can afford to lose. Yeah, I've, I've also heard some people, some some skeptics say that. Um you know, cryptocurrency is a, it's an interesting idea. It's it's fun to think about, but you know, when, when governments um, really feel threatened by something, they're going to just take control of it and shut it down whenever they want. And what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so, what do, what do you yeah. say to those people? Yeah, I say that. I mean, it, the only way they can do that is by shutting down the internet. Right. And uh, that right. that's that's going to cause you know. I mean, they, they, I don't know how they. Get, you know, I've heard about this internet kill switch they've been developing. Uh-huh. Uh You know, behind the scenes. So. Uh, like I said, I mean, there's EMPs, there's all different things that happen. I mean, right, right. Uh, look at look at Puerto Rico right now. Look at different places that have been destroyed, don't have electricity. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's why you want to have some cash and gold and silver as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 one solution uh, for for what's what's going on. Not the only solution, of course. Yeah, like I know Peter Schiff, who has a precious metals company. He's been a longtime skeptic of of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, and I don't, I don't think he's changed his position either. Uh, or, although, wait, wait, I think he does accept Bitcoin for <laughs> his precious metals. But, but I don't think he's like he's like recommending people get into it. Oh, that that guy that guy talks his book a lot. I I do respect Peter Schiff. Right. In mo- most other areas, I've read you know his his books and, right. and have yeah. followed his work for a while. But I, I think he's wrong on crypto, and he's he's obviously been proven wrong with the with the price movements recently. Right. Yeah. And and also, um, are you familiar with Mike Maloney? Uh, from gold course, silver yeah down. yeah yeah he's fantastic mike yeah. maloney puts out fantastic videos explaining yeah, the right. far the farce of fractional reserve banking and yeah. you know what that's really all about so yeah he's great and yeah. he's 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 become uh he's become you know more positive on bitcoin as well yeah definitely i've, I've noticed that uh, yeah i really have learned a lot from mike doug, maloney. doug, doug casey as well you know right. another another long time gold guy has become mm-hmm. more positive on crypto Right, right, right. It's really fascinating to see. And, and so, yeah, Mike Maloney, it's fascinating to see his evolution of kind of being skeptical to he's slowly recommending people to get into it um, alongside of precious metals, you know, as, as just a way, another way to preserve your wealth. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's that's the, the thing is that, I mean, it was amazing what happened with the Saudi princes. You, and I'm not sure if you've been following what's mm. going on in Saudi Arabia. No. There's been massive, massive things happening in Saudi Arabia in the last week. Uh-huh. Um, the... One of the main princes who's uh, worth billions of dollars. He's one of the largest holders of Citigroup and some other companies. Hmm. Uh, he just called Bitcoin a fraud uh, hmm. like last week or mm-hmm. two weeks ago. And, uh, and then <laughs> the next week he's arrested by the, by the Saudi uh, officials for money laundering and for all these different crimes. And they shut down his accounts and, and froze his accounts. Well, if he had crypto, he, he, would, he wouldn't have to worry about that because mm. no one can – unless they can get your private keys, they can't take your, uh, your crypto away. So it's uh, interesting that it happened in that sequence. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean it's so true. Like, like the advantages that, that cryptocurrencies have – over precious metals is um you know is unparalleled like you know how do you if you want to buy something with gold something that's over an ocean away what are you going to do you're going to mail your gold like 
it's uh, it's definitely more more challenging to to transact with. So you know? and there's also way way better memes with Bitcoin for sure than gold. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, yeah. You, like I see stories all the time of people trying to transport their um, gold coins, especially gold coins, over you know like a border, and then you just get stopped and gets confiscated, and you're like, what do you have this for? You know, you must be yeah. a criminal. You know, and then how how easy how difficult is it to to retrieve something once it's confiscated by state officials? Like, wow! Oh my goodness! Yeah, well, you see what they're doing with civil asset forfeiture. You know, here in the states, they're mm. the gov the government's literally stealing more money from people than than robbers. There's more right, there's more right. more more assets taken from civil asset forfeiture yeah. um, recently than from reported in theft. So, yeah. you know, really really nuts. But you know, <laughs> with with all that being said, you know, um, we can. We can focus on the big picture things and study them, whatever. But at the end of the day, we all have to um, create the best that we can from where we are. And that's why, you know, I'm focused on you know, individual transformations, you know, one person at a time. Yeah, yeah. That's what I definitely love about your message. And uh, and also, you know, that's kind of, kind of what I try to focus on in my videos as well is um, just helping people to think differently, you know, um, because, you know, in the beginning – most I think anarchists go through this angry phase where yeah. you know you're just angry that you've been deceived and duped and lied to, um, and you know you rightfully should. But the problem is uh, a lot of people stay in that state, right? And yes, then, exactly. And that go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly uh, what happens for for too many people for too long, and um, you actually end up losing effectiveness because you know mm. who wants to listen to angry people, right. You know for 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 too long, so. Mm. Again, that's where, you know, hiring a coach, um, going to an avatar course, you know, doing things to raise your consciousness, to raise your vibration mm -hmm. in order to be able to expand your mindset, you know, helps you to be more effective in affecting that change. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know, you, you, I always say uh, the saying, you attract more flies with, uh, with honey than with vinegar, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, exactly. No, nobody wants to hear a complainer or, or an angry, you know, curmudgeon or anything like that. <laughs> um, exactly. You, you know, it's, like, it's like, why are, you, why are you just drawn to people? You know, some people draw more people. Why is that? You know? Oh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the... the Dale Carnegie had it right with uh, how to win friends and influence people, you know, 80, 90 years ago or mm. whenever that book came out. Um, you know, it said, if you if you want to if you want to catch honey, don't kick over the beehive. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a smooth way of doing things and then there's a coarse, rough way of doing things. And I guess I guess for some people, you know, like some people say, well, I needed the you know intellectual two by four to to help you know snap me out of statism um but uh but i'm not the one to wield that two by four so I'm, you're not going to get it from me <laughs> got it it's not it's not my style you know it's like no no and by the way i love your videos man i love uh i love your you. storytelling um I, the other one the other day with the tragedy of the commons and the kids with the chips <laughs> you know it's so, so instructive and I, I love the way that you put those together and the background with the the beautiful um you know trees up there in the in you're in the catskills or where are you oh various places yeah catskill okay, mountains cool. you know wherever i'm um, yeah i was I'm, i was camping sometimes sometimes it's just in my backyard but it looks nice still um sometimes at a beautiful lake you know just yeah different place i'm like i, I should do a video here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's you know wherever you're inspired yeah yeah and uh and yeah yeah the thing is um i try to see i try to find um you know, valuable lessons that we can learn from our everyday situations. Because I think yes. if we do pay attention, there are valuable lessons uh, that we can teach. You know, you can you can talk about the the idea of the broken window fallacy, and you can uh, and you can say the theory behind it. But then, how do you how do you apply that into everyday real life? Like, I see that every single day. I can do a video like that's the broken window. That's the broken like. <laughs> um, so I think that's important is is applying the theory to um, to real situations, and I think that's when that's when it kind of makes sense to you because you're kind of living it. You know, you're understanding it, right? So. Exactly right. So, what's new for you these days, man? What have you been working on? Well, um, actually, these days I have been doing a lot of my focus on uh, on my. I also have a chess YouTube channel. <laughs> so I'm actually chess. Oh, oh, you like, oh, oh wow! I, I I love playing chess too. I have to play chess one day. Yeah, I'm a big chess player. Ever since I was, um, uh, I mean, I, I learned. My father taught me when I was around six years old, but I I uh, I got serious at twelve. 
and um, and I, I read a lot of chess books, went to chess tournaments, had a chess tutor. Um, I played a lot of chess online, and uh, and then um, yeah, and went traveling to various tournaments. It was really a lot of fun. Um, but then you know, I kind of had a lull during the during my college years. But I'm kind of kind of you know becoming more active online now. And I started my chess YouTube channel. I don't know if you've seen it, Danilovich Chess. No, not yet. No, I'll have to check that out. For yeah, sure. Danilovich Chess. Um, I have videos of there of me playing speed chess with my friends um and i have pictures uh, videos of my kids playing speed chess with other kids um and um and also when i play chess online i'm going to be recording my games online and like and and i'm going to be talking through my games like so i can um so i can make it clear how how my thought process is going and that's i think that's kind of instructive like because i love watching masters and grandmasters play and i love not only watching them play, but also hearing them talk about how they're thinking. You know, I think that's one of the best ways to learn. So, so yeah, that's my thing. That's my other one of my other <laughs> passions. Is, that's that's great. So yeah, so if you if you notice in, in my videos, I, I uh, a, lot, a lot of the examples are with chess. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed yeah, that. No, now now that you say that, I do remember you uh, mentioned that. Oh, times, so that's cool. I didn't know you were so that big into it. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, so yeah, and I, I'm actually now st- trying to um teach uh, some students now and i'm organizing a chess club of uh various homeschoolers and not you know non-homeschoolers but wh- whoever was interested in in learning um because i just love it that much i just i want to teach it you know and and and, he, and you know what's so beautiful is when you get when i get a, a a child that never played chess in their life right but they're interested mm-hmm. in learning and then by the end of of uh you know being with me and learning and being around the other kids they love it and they like ah that was so awesome that's i can't cool. wait to learn more you know and yeah, it's really a great game yeah yeah and that's my goal is basically to transmit my love and passion for the game to the next person right and so um, yeah so so and i think this this idea of logic and and rationality for me very easily transferred into um, capitalism and free markets and, you know and, and volunteer it just makes sense like economics you know <laughs> it just it just all goes together it's it's real simple there's there's one side of the ledger, which is Austrian economics and voluntarism and agorism and anarchism right. and decentralization and love and compassion and entrepreneurship. And the other side of the ledger is the state and government and um, central banks and coercion and war and violence and farce and corruption. You yeah. know, so that, that's I think it's, it's pretty clear. Um, that's the way that's the way it's set up. And, you know, right now. We're in the, the, the vast minority of people who have studied these principles and have looked into it. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, it's more and more people all the time. Um, unfortunately, more people are also falling asleep because of technology and, mm. and media indoctrination. At the same time, other people are waking up. So uh, I, I, I've, I've given up on it being a short process. I think it's going to be a longer process right. to, uh, to create you know, a, a peaceful planet and a, a, a voluntary society. But... You know, it, it's uh, it's getting there, and there's more people that are uh, working to build things, you right. know, outside the matrix, and that's exciting. Yeah, you know, I think I see a lot of people, a lot of volunteers get discouraged, you know, and they're like, you know, I'm realizing that at the pace we're going, um, I'm gonna die before uh, you know a voluntary society is realized. And and the way I look at it, I don't think that's the right way to, to go because it's more like you know just. Affect as much change as you can. Just move, move, just move one step forward. Right, you know, that, right. That's all. That's all you can do. Right. Talk to you know one person each day. You know, just be real with the people around you. You know, spread love and compassion and kindness, and you know that's it. That's how you make a difference. That's how you make an improvement. And don't worry about the voluntary to free society. Okay, if that comes in your lifetime, that's nice. It's a, that's like the cherry on the cake. But you know, that's to me, it doesn't mean our life. Our life was failed or a failure or in vain if that did not happen <laughs> in our life. I I, I, t- I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah. So it, like like you know the way you described like on one side is is volunteers and, and free markets and the other side is the state and coercion. Um, it, it really makes it clear how um how absurd you know people focus on these petty divisions of like the rich and the poor, black white. You know, immigrant, non-immigrant. You know, um, any you know, male and female. There's all these petty divisions that only serve to weaken everyone and just and just divide us. You know, and go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just there's uh, something I've said for several years. It's not black versus white. It's not left versus right. 
it's not Arab versus Jew. It's the state versus you. That's the that's the only division in human consciousness. Mark Passio talks about this. You, you're familiar with Mark yeah, Passio, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So he's definitely a big influence. Yeah. Um, you know, on me, uh, I was actually there live at his natural law presentation in wow. Connecticut in 2013. Nice. My friend, uh, my friend Chris, uh, was one of the people who organized that. Wow. And that was uh, just the way that you said, you know, different things you've learned all integrated and all made sense together. Mm-hmm. Um, that the natural law training and that information just goes right in with the Avatar course, goes right in with uh, with voluntarism all all together learning about the non-aggression principle and the self-defense yeah. principle and really what those mean, especially the self-defense principle. I saw this video of, uh, it was, uh, it happened to be the, uh, uh, gays against guns. And there was, uh, some people laying down and saying, gun control now, gun control now. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be protecting us. How many more have to die? It's like, oh, shoot. So literally like you, you want the person that you just called Hitler for right. a year to, to take all the guns away from it. It's like, it just doesn't even, it's just, you know, but it's, it, it, statism is kind of like a mental illness, but, yeah. you know, I, but I, you have compassion for people yeah, um, yeah. because that's the way I was until 2011. So, right, you know, right. it's, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of the, um, the homeschooling mothers that I hang out with are a lot of, uh, you know, leftist, liberal Bernie Sanders supporters, um, almost socialist, you can say. Um, but still, you know, I hang out and I'm good friends with them. And so it's fine, you know, and they, they, they know where I come from. But I don't like. I'm not always harassing them with, you know, <laughs> anarchism, anarchism, capitalism. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Dude, my 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 bet my closest family members are status, you know, yeah. and they're they're, you know, I've got family members, really close family members that are, you know, they're doctor and surgeon and mm-hmm. right all up in there with, you know, um, I mean those two um, areas now are the the biggest beneficiaries of. Um, the, the borrowing and the theft from the future, you know, mm. that's happening. And, mm. um, you know, they don't see things the same way I do, but mm. you know, I want to see my niece, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight with them. You know what right. I mean? I mean, I, all, all you can do is to, right. uh, inspire and just yeah. you know, be the change and, yeah. and live with as much liberty as you can. And, you know, the people who want to emulate you and right, learn right. from you are going to do it. You know, that's right. all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the, uh, the first time I remember I, st- I started learning. About, I was reading Larkin Rose's um, book, The Most Dangerous Superstition. Yeah. And I was so excited about it. And I was telling my mother about it. And, uh, and uh, you know, the idea of stateless societies and volunteerism and non-aggression and all that. And then she's like, so there was like a little pause in her, in her voice. And she's like, what right wing nut are you listening to? <laughs> No, it's like people are stuck in this binary zero one, you know, um, deal because that's the divide and control system that's being, you know, uh, put in place. So, yeah. you know, that's that's what we're up against. But yeah. again, it's it's one person at a time awakening people, right. and uh, that's why I do. Um, that's why I teach the habit course, and that's why I'm a comeback coach. You know, is to is to help people make those changes. Yeah, you know, I, I love I love the fact uh, when I meet different volunteers and I hear what they're doing. They're each of them are are um, using a different strategy to spread this message, right? Like you're doing it through this avatar course and the crypto consulting and another person might be doing it through rapping or writing books or a poet or musician. Unschooling or or ayahuasca, you know. Right. Agorism, um, shamanism, whatever. And it's beautiful. And then then Sterling with this psychology, he's he's going at the psychology field. Um, And that's awesome. You know, I just see so many different fields are being penetrated with this uh, beautiful philosophy and um i see be- i see beautiful things in the future i uh i really i really think that um i'm happy to be alive right now meet the people that i have met um and i think that we can only go up from here you know i uh i don't see world war three in our future um i just don't you know i i uh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe that's me being I, I, naive. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. I, I'm certainly not going to be afraid of it. Um, my goal is to become as anti-fragile as possible in, in how I live my life and mm. um, what I'm doing. Uh, that way, um, you know, when things change, should they change, I'm able to mm. have a strong mindset and a strong right. um, you know, level of vibration and consciousness, and right. I'll deal with what happens then. Uh, but yeah, being afraid of these... these uh, these tail risk outcomes, right. you know, doesn't really uh, help you create more autonomy and more uh, more self sufficiency. You know, taking aligned action towards your goals and learning new things and figuring out 
you know, how you can fit in in this whole process is, is what we'll do that. So, so you're saying you don't have a, a, a large underground bunker with your toilet paper and your and your I, and your I, I do not, I do not have the, I do not have food. that yet. <laughs> I actually have very few things now. I, I, I uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of stuff anymore. I used to have uh, uh, a big million dollar house and two German cars and all all things. You know, back when I was uh, on Wall Street, and that all got discreated. You know, several years ago when I, uh, I made a series of poor decisions mm. um, based, you know, out of fear and you know. I didn't have a flexible belief system at that time uh, that allowed me to, to, to roll with what was happening. And so, uh, yeah, it, it kind of is fitting that I'm a comeback coach as I'm coming back myself, hmm. you know, back to uh, some of the places that I used to be. But uh, instead of doing it, uh, working for someone else and being part of the matrix, I'm doing it through uh, serving people one person at a time. So it's take a little longer to, to get back to to where I was, but that's that's not even uh, you know, the, the, the whole end goal, um, the, the goal is just to affect as much change as I can and just enjoy my life and, and help as many people as I can along the way. Would you say that you're an advocate of, uh, minimalism right now? Yeah, definitely. For sure. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate of minimalism. I, I live, a, you know, more nomadic lifestyle. Uh, mm-hmm. even in the Netherlands, I lived in several different cities mm. as I made my way there and figured out uh, that country and, mm. Got my I have, I have Dutch residency now, so I can go back and forth as I please, which nice. is uh, which is awesome. Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean uh, the obsession with things um, that you know I think it's another part of the control system, and things and can end up weighing you down. Mm. So I'm definitely uh, in the stage at the moment. Uh, I've been in different stages before mm. where I'm prioritizing uh, education and experiences over things. Mm. Although I'm looking forward to having things again, <laughs> more, <laughs> you know, in, in, in the future, and that, that's 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 uh, that, that's happening. But um, yeah, I've actually dealt with a lot of scarcity the last few years, and you know, having different things happen, and mm. um, going going to the Netherlands, I had almost no resources left. You know, when uh, uh, when I when I went there, I was a, a big reset button for me to do that, and. A big stretch, but uh, I think when you set up your life where you're you're constantly stretching and you're constantly uh, becoming bigger and, and having challenges that you can overcome, um, it makes you a stronger person and makes you you know better for the experience. Yeah, I think I think um, maybe by default, our my, my family we're practicing um, this ex- uh, focus on experiences. Like instead of getting our kids you know expensive toys, we you know we use the money that we have to buy um, like classes or you know go on camping trips or you know those kind of experiences you know and, and, and we think that that's so much more valuable for the kids or meeting up with other families or going to a museum right rather than just buying a video game or another you know another toy um, I think that you know what, like exactly what you said um, I think it can have a much deeper impact right on, on, a, on a developing mind it's awesome bro before we uh, before we start to wrap up, I want to talk about comeback coaching real quick. Oh, please do, please um, do. So right. yeah, yeah, cool, man. So uh, so comeback coaching is uh, my online business that I created last year. Um, I got my assistant coach uh, over in the Netherlands that we work together. Uh, her name is Lotha Eikestam, and uh, you know we're we're a team over there, and uh, I help liberty-minded people get drastically unstuck and flowing into better shape and spirit through one-on-one coaching and group support. So I just posted a video tonight, one of te- my testimonials from a client who uh, ended up earning about $30,000 mm. uh, extra in just uh, just four weeks of working with me, made some small changes to what he was doing. Wow. So uh, I've had uh, a lot of awesome testimonials, and uh, my new websites will be coming out soon, so I'll definitely let you know. Mm. Uh, maybe it'll be ready but before you release this video so I can include it <laughs> with, right. uh, with, uh, with everything else. Awesome, awesome. Sounds good. So, so you're, you, so this is your business now, the, the comeback that's, coaching. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my business, and so uh, I do that, um, you know, online with people and work mm-hmm. on the phone. And uh, people, I've actually had two of my uh, clients then become avatar students as well, mm. uh, and, and and take that course to you know do something a little bit different. So yeah, uh, yeah I got multiple ways to serve people, and uh, I'm, yeah. I'm here to I'm here to help. Great, great, awesome. So yeah, definitely. Hopefully, uh, people will sign up for that. And uh, yeah, that's not, that's awesome. You know, improving uh, one life at a time. I like it. <laughs> yeah, man. So awesome. So uh, so yeah. So let's wrap up. So um, is there any, any other things you want to mention before we before we sign off? Yeah, just uh, want to say want to say thanks for having me back on again, and uh, looking forward to uh, connecting with any people that that watch this and um, are looking to uh, 
you know, get to the next level and uh, get some help from someone who's created a lot of experiences, both both positive and negative, and is uh, working on the light side of the force to uh, to help people move forward, you know, in this voluntary process. So, okay, so so repeat one one more time. What's the best way they can find you if they if they want to follow yeah, you? Follow you. Sure. So on Skype, it's Avatar A and W. Um, on Facebook, uh, Adam N Williams. Instagram is also Adam and Williams. That's one word. Twitter's Adam and Williams, uh, one word. And uh, yeah, my email is uh, riceowladam at gmail dot com. So those are all the ways you can get a hold of me. Excellent, excellent. So um, I know I asked you this last time you were on, but it might have changed. So what is your favorite quote of all time, or maybe a quote that you have loved recently that you've been thinking about? Sure, it's a quote from uh, Harry Palmer, who wrote the Avatar Course. And uh, it's a quote uh, on the definition of love. And it's uh, love is an expression of the willingness to create space in which something is allowed to change. Ooh, very nice. I like that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Danilo. No problem. Great talking to you, Adam. So please, everyone, check out his course. Check out his websites. We're going to include those in the uh, description below. So, uh, th- yeah, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for listening. Thanks, Adam, for coming on. So this is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, please feel free to donate and help me interview other fascinating people. You can do so through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. A dollar a show is all I ask. If you feel so inclined to donate more, please feel free. It will only assist me in spreading the message of freedom and volunteerism that much farther and that much more efficiently. You can also donate to my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin address is in the description to my videos as well as on my website, peacefulanarchism.com. And while you're on my site, there's a donate button to donate through PayPal. If you prefer to donate through PayPal, you can do so with that. But Patreon is a little bit easier for content creators as you can set up a recurring donation if you so desire. Also, while you're on my website, peacefulanarchism.com, please feel free to sign up, enter your email address, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive updates every time I post something, a video or an interview. I do not send out any spam. Or you can also follow me on Facebook under facebook.com slash peaceful anarchism or facebook.com slash Danilo Cuellar 3, I believe. Danilo Cuellar 3. So either either one of those methods, if you are able to donate, I would be most appreciative. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a magnificent day. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.